I'm currently in the process of making two more build videos to upload to the channel very soon. Both of them are PvP orientated and both of them are healer builds. One of them is the Reclaimer healer that I've been running with for these past couple of weeks and the other one is the Final Measure healer that my teammates have been running with to kinda complement the Reclaimer healer as a sort of backup healer so to speak. Uh, and with both of those builds, but of course especially for the Reclaimer build, the support station and how to use it in PvP is pretty damn important to success. So to go with the builds themselves, the videos that I was making also focused a lot on tips and tricks and general information about the support station and how to use it the right way and all that stuff. And I guess that information is useful for a lot of people, but it also made both of those videos very lengthy and also very similar, which is something that I didn't really want. It basically added a whole extra part of the video that some people might not even care about. You know, some people might just be there for the build. Or the other way around, they might already have to build, but they're just looking to improve their gameplay. In either case, the videos that I was in the middle of making, they wouldn't be ideal. You'd be looking at a 25 to 30 minute long video with only 10 or 15 minutes of information that would be useful to you. Uh, so to kind of counteract that, I decided to change it up a little bit and cut all the gameplay related tips and tricks around the support station from both of those videos and then put everything that I had to say into this video, so that if you're looking for gameplay tips and tricks, you can come here to this video, and those looking for just the builds, they can just wait a couple days until I have the build videos ready, and then they can watch a video that's more to the point and less time consuming. Uh, just a heads up for all the experienced players out there though, this is just something that I wanted to mention, because since we're doing a dedicated video about the support station alone, I thought it would also make sense to include the very basics of the support station for anybody that's just coming back to the game or somebody that's maybe new. Uh, there is some pretty advanced stuff in the video as well, we'll get to that later in the video. For example, how to use the support stations when you have multiple support stations in the same team. Because if you're doing it wrong, you can miss out on a lot of healing and that kind of stuff. And we're going to go over on how to use the support station against Predator's Mark users. Uh, but we're also going to go over the very, very basics for anyone playing catch-up. So yeah, if you're one of those experienced players, a lot of the information in this video, uh, it's going to be stuff that you, of course, already know. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, the support station, and it's very base. What is it? Well, it's, it's basically a lunch box that you can put on the floor that then heals everybody in a certain area every second. Every second it adds a little bit of healing to you. Just like any other scale, the support station has three mods. We have the life support, the immunizer, and the ammo cache, which all do different things. The life support automatically revives players when they're downed in the support station area. The immunizer makes everybody immune to status effects, and the ammo box gives you free ammo when you reload your weapon. It also gives you 15% skill haste and 30% signature skill resource gain. And aside from those bonuses, different support station mods also come with slightly different stats. Uh, the life support, for example, it has 20% more healing per second than the other two mods, and the immunizer has a lower lifetime than the rest. These different stats are to sort of balance it out. This is also why if you're playing with the Reclaimer gear set, which allows the players to have all mods of the support station to be active at the same time, you still always want to play the life support mod, because this way you'll get the highest healing amount per second while still having all three mods activated. Because yes, the base stats, they still matter when playing Reclaimer. And it's a pretty significant difference in some cases. On so my PvP Reclaimer build, for example, the difference is about 4,000 health per second. Aside from the three mods, we of course also have the Master mod, which allows you to blow up the box manually, which will then burst heal everybody in the radius for 33% of their health. And this can also overheal the players, meaning you can pop it at full health just before a fight, and you'll start the fight off with 133% health. Uh, what is probably even more important to note though with this master mod is that you can also manually blow the support station up while you're aiming and shooting your gun. Something that also used to be possible with the first 8 skill uh, before 1.8, but something that was ultimately removed probably to lower the PvP skill gap or to nerf the first 8 skill in itself. I don't really know. Anyway, what's important to note is that uh, you can still blow up the box and give yourself the burst healing as you're aiming and shooting your gun. And this is why I use the support station immunizer on all of my solo builds instead of a first aid. Because not only does the immunizer of course remove the status effects from me, but it also acts as a burst heal which I can use while trading damage with somebody. I put the support station on the floor, then I aim down sight, then I start shooting, and then as I'm taking damage, I'm blowing up the station to give myself a little bit more health, and that's something that's very, very useful. Now, if you're playing uh, a healer, uh, there are going to be buffs that are going to be relevant for you that boost your skill power. Uh, this could be the final measure buff from the 6 piece, that uh, when you defuse an EMP or a shock grenade, it gives you 40% more skill power. 
Or it could be tactician stacks, or it could be talents like uh, Dead by Proxy, or uh, a weapon talent like Talented. All of these things, they will increase your skill power in one way or another. And if you want to get use out of this in combination with the support station, then you always want to use the support station after you get the buff and not before. Uh, the reason for this is very simple, and that's because the strength of the support station, the healing per second, the HP of the box, all of that, it is all snapshotted the moment that you place the station on the ground. This means that if you put the station on the floor and then get the buffs afterwards, the station is not going to be affected by it. You need to wait until you have those buffs and then place the station on the floor. It's not always possible, but it's something that you want to keep in mind. And the same kind of goes for the cooldown. However, the, the support station cooldown is a little bit special because it doesn't start until the station is destroyed. So the cooldown of the support station will be snapshotted not when you place the box, but the moment that the box is destroyed. And this is also very important to keep in mind when you're using Reclaimer, because if you're using Reclaimer, you can use this to your advantage in a couple of ways. Uh, for example, I mentioned that the ammo box mod for the support station gives the player 15% skill haste, right? And as a Reclaimer, you obviously have access to this because you have all three mods. So when you manually blow up the support station while you're still in the radius, you'll still have the 15% skill haste the moment that the cooldown starts. Because you're in the station, you press the button, the cooldown starts, and then the station is destroyed. So basically, if you blow up the support station while you're still in it, and you have that skill haste, then the support station skill haste will be applied to its own cooldown. This is why you never need more than 35% skill haste natively on your character, because 50% skill haste is the cap, and you already get the additional 15% through the station. But yeah, that's generally something more important for PvE, because for PvP you still want to have a lot of skill haste natively, because uh, the support station's probably going to get EMP'd a lot of the time, and then you're not going to get that skill haste. So yeah, let's talk about PvP a bit. How and when do you use the station? Well, that's also kind of really dependent on the build. Uh, again, if you're a reclaimer, then you generally don't have to care that much about where you place the box, because uh, if somebody destroys it, you instantly get the cooldown back, at least if you spec 9000 in the electronics. And in most cases, you want to spec 9000 in the electronics. Uh, so what I try to do as a reclaimer is I usually just try to place it as close towards the enemies as possible, preferably right in between them. So that when my team is pushing, they'll have the immunity and they have the healing to go with it. However, if you're trying to keep the station alive, if you're not looking to push, if you aren't playing Reclaimer maybe and you don't have that instant cooldown, then generally you want to place a support station around corners or out of sight. Speaks for itself, really. If you're fighting on the streets, you can even put it into car tires. This is something that I used to do a lot uh, because car tires, for some reason, they don't have collision with uh, the support station. So you can actually just hide it in there in most cases. If you want to push in with a group, you can also throw the support station very up high into the air as you're pushing. This will slow your character down a little bit. It will make you a little bit more vulnerable as you do the animation. But this can actually be very beneficial to you because while the support station is in the air, it technically isn't deployed yet and thus any EMP effect will not be applied to it. So what will happen a lot of the times is that your team's going to push in, you're behind them, you throw the station up in the air, the enemy, they see you coming, so they shoot their EMP sticky at you. Everybody is EMP'd, but then a second later, the support station lands on the floor and it cleanses everybody and their EMP sticky is now on cooldown while you still have your support station being active. If you don't do this, if you just place the support station on the floor and then push, they will shoot the EMP sticky as well, and then you'll end up with a, with a support station that's not working anymore because, of course, they EMP'd it. Now, you might say that this is actually pretty tricky to do, but the time window that the support station cannot be hit by an EMP effect is actually pretty big. You know, it goes all the way from the throwing animation, where you still have the support station in your hand, to about half a second after it touches the floor. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's always going to work. You know, in some cases, the enemies might be early or late with EMP, which then causes you to not being able to push or causes the support station to still be EMP'd. But in a lot of cases, players don't really think about this. And it actually helps you out a lot because suddenly you have, uh, you have a support station that should have been EMP'd, but that's actually still working. Now, when the support station does get hit by an EMP effect, though, what you want to do is you want to instantly blow it up. Uh, the disrupt effect from an EMP sticky or even an EMP grenade, they last 12 seconds long. And disrupt resistance on gear only applies to the player, not to the support station itself. Now if you take in mind that a high skill power support station usually has a cooldown of about 12 to 17 seconds, uh, you're better off giving the team that 33% burst heal right away and then using triage to get the station back underneath 12 seconds. 
This way you're practically waiting just as long to get the station back, if not shorter, because the EMP effect is 12 seconds and your cooldown might be a lot shorter than 12 seconds due to the use of triage, but you also give them that uh, that 33% burst heal for the whole team, and that's, that's pretty powerful if I'm being honest with you. But yeah, that is basically uh, the general information that was already commonly known to most players uh basically before patch 1.8 but with patch 1.8 some new features were also introduced the support station went through some changes so now i want to talk about the stuff that i don't think a lot of people know about and the first one is regarding uh predator's mark because with patch 1.8 the developers also added the classified version of predator's mark which not only makes uh, the bleed that they have a lot more powerful but it also allows the predator's mark bleed to cut through the immunity effect basically the predator's mark bleed it ignores immunity now, that doesn't mean that you cannot use a support station or a med kit to get rid of the bleed. In fact, if you get hit by the bleed and you walk into an immunizer, or if you use a med kit, the bleed will go away, it will be removed. But what this does mean is that the immunity cannot help to prevent a bleed. So if you want to use uh, uh, an immunity effect preemptively, for example, if you sit in a support station thinking that's going to prevent a bleed, well, that's not really how it works, because in that case you will still be tagged by the bleed effect. Uh, the same goes for talents such as Adrenaline, which provides the player with 7 seconds of immunity. A lot of the players think that this talent is bugged, that it's not working, but this talent is actually working as intended. If you pop a medkit, you're going to be immune for 7 seconds. That always works, but because of how Praetor's Mark ignores immunity, uh, you can still be tacked by a bleed effect even with that 7 second time window. So yeah, basically you cannot use immunity to prevent a bleed, but you can use immunity to get rid of a bleed. Uh, and because of the way that this works, the best way to play against the Predator's Mark player is in fact to not sit inside of the support station, but to stay at the very edge of it. So that every time that you get hit by the bleed, you simply have to take one step in and then one step out of the support station to get rid of the bleed. In fact, that's what I've been doing. If I notice that some Predator player is trying to kill me, he's, you know, he's going for the healer, I'm playing the healer. What I'll do is I'll just run back and forth into my support station and then suddenly he's doing zero damage because the bleed gets cleansed over and over and over again. It's of course a little bit more difficult to do when you have a Reclaimer in the team because his support station will naturally be a lot bigger, thus the edges will probably be a lot harder to reach in time. But in such cases, what we like to do is we like to use multiple support stations within a group. Uh, what we'll do, for example, is have one big support station to cover the area that we want to fight in, and then one smaller support station that sits kind of in the middle, somewhere inside the bigger radius. And then what we can do is step in and out of the smaller support station radius, which will then continuously cleanse the bleed, while we're still getting all the healing and all the benefits from the bigger support station. And this is one of the reasons why we are running double healer most of the time now. It's basically so that Predator's Mark will not have that much of an impact when we're playing against it. Now in the past with patch 1.6 and patch 1.7, uh, we of course had issues with the support station healing. Not only when we would use multiple support stations, but even when we would have uh, a single support station, it just wasn't healing consistently. Uh, I've talked about that a lot in a lot of videos, I was pretty vocal about it. Uh, and now in patch 1.8 it's been changed. It's not perfect by any means, and in some cases you can still lose out on some of the healing that you should have gotten. But in any case it's a lot better than it was in patch 1.7. And right now I quickly just want to show you how to use the support stations to get the most healing out of it. So yeah, how, uh, how do the support stations work in patch 1.8? Well, Basically, the game only allows a player to be healed by one support station at the same time. And the way that the game prioritizes which support station that's going to be is by simply taking the first support station that you're getting healed by and then ignoring any other additional support stations that come after that, regardless of which one is stronger. For example, I've got two support stations on the floor right here. I've got one weaker one on the left and then I've got the stronger support station on the right and there's also an overlapping area right in the middle. Now, if I stand in the overlapping area, I'll get healed by the support station that was healing me first. So if I enter the weak support station first and then walk to the middle area, I'll keep getting healed by the weaker support station. But if I enter the strong support station first and then walk to the middle area, then I'll keep getting healed by the stronger support station. Basically, I'll keep getting the healing from the support station that I entered first until I completely exit the area of the first support station. In that case, if I completely exit the area from the first support station, that's when the game allows other support stations to heal me again, just as you can see here. What this means gameplay-wise is that when you see a Reclaimer support station on the floor, you should probably always blow up your weaker support station just in case you had the weaker support station on the ground before the Reclaimer did. But this also means that as a DPS player, 
You should not have any fear of quickly using your weak support station for the burst healing from the master mod, because as long as you stay in the reclaimer station range, you will continue to receive the strong healing from it, even if you have another weaker station on top of it. And this is why running double support station against Praetor's Mark is also so good, because in a lot of cases the weaker station does not prevent the stronger station from healing, because you know, in a lot of cases you're going to use the weaker station to walk in and out of that area to, to cleanse the bleed sort of. So doing it like this and setting it up like this, no matter in what order you put the support stations down or in what order you enter the support station, it all doesn't matter, because as soon as you exit the weaker station and enter the, the stronger station, that's the moment where the stronger station is going to take over and it's not going to turn around again until you completely exit the reclaimer station, which is really difficult to do because the radius is so big. So you're going to get the full healing from the reclaimer station, but you're also going to avoid almost any and all bleed damage whatsoever. I will say though that uh, when I was testing, when I was making this video, I, I did run into some situations where having two overlapping stations could cause one of the support stations to not heal players at all even if the players were clearly standing in the support station range. Now I've tried to replicate this and I've checked back on the footage to see what might have caused it, but honestly guys, I was not able to find the cause of this problem. Uh, it was very rare, it almost never happened, and uh, the issue always seemed to go away when the first support station was destroyed. So whenever you run into this, just tell your teammate to blow up the station and it will be fixed. It's of course not ideal that we have this in the game, but again, I don't know what causes it, and it's already miles better than what we had in patch 1.7 anyway, so I'm happy either way. Things that you also kind of want to watch out for when playing healer is to not instant cast a support station when you're too close to an object, because if you do that, the character will put out the support station from his pocket, uh, and then it will bug out because he will try to place it down, but there's no space for it, and then you'll not be able to use your skills for a couple seconds. Uh, it's very annoying when you run into this because it can really cause you to die. I've died because of this oh so many times already. And I, I don't know if it's ever going to get fixed. So just, just keep an eye out for that. But yeah, that is pretty much the whole video. Having played the healer role since patch 1.3 before anybody even knew what Vigorous was. Uh, this is almost everything that I know about the support station. There are of course a few more things that I know. Such as uh, that for example the skill haste and the signature skill resource gain from multiple ammo box support stations. They stack. Uh, so you can actually get 120% signature skill resource gain uh, within the squad if you have four times the ammo box. And I also know that uh, the strongest station possible, it's going to be healing you for about 48,000 health per second, which looks something like this. It's, it's pretty crazy, right? You can, uh, you can you can see that health going up for sure. However, when it comes down to the useful stuff, to the useful information, then uh, this is all there is to it. Do let me know what you what you thought of this video, though. Obviously, the game's almost two years old now. Most of the information in this video, it's pretty well known at this point, but I figured it's better to just throw all this information into one video so that the build videos, the Reclaimer Healer and the Final Measure Healer, they can just focus on the actual build and we don't have to go over all of this again when I make more healer videos. That's basically the point of this. Uh, but yeah, as always, I will see you guys later, or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later.